All right, welcome back grade 12s. And let's take a look now at section 2.2, the square root of a function. I want you to take note of uh, what's here, focus on. So we're going to look at sketching the graph of y equals the square root of a given function, given the graph of a function. That's to say, if I give you uh, a graph like this, how do I calculate the square root of that graph? So we'll look at that. Uh, we'll talk about some different strategies for graphing. And then we'll focus on domain and range. And we'll spend a fair bit of time on domain and range and seeing how they're linked between y equals f of x and y equals the square root of f of x. Now we have used the square root function before uh, to find the square root of something like in Pythagoras' theorem where we've got a squared plus uh, b squared equals c squared. And if we want to find out what c is, we know that c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. We're doing the same kind of thing here. Different calculations, different numbers underneath the square root function, but the same idea. And we're actually going to look at how we can graph that. So if we're given the graph of a function, what does the graph of the square root of that function look like? That's what we're going to explore today. All right, so in this first example, we're going to compare the graphs of a linear function like 3 minus 2x and the square root of that function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to graph both. So I'm going to set that up here. I'm just going to draw a brief or a, a simple xy coordinate and we'll label that with our x-axis and our y-axis and we'll just go up by ones here. 3, 6, 7, etc. And negative or 1, 2, three, four, just like that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to graph y equals three minus two x. Now, y equals three minus two x, I prefer to think of that as y equals negative two x plus three. And that puts it into slope and y-intercept form. Makes it easy for me to graph. I always look for what the y-intercept is first, plot that point, and then I use the slope to identify other points. And if the slope is negative 2, that means we're going down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1, or up 2 and back 1, up 2 and back 1. And I can generate a line There we go. And I've got it. So that's f of x is equal to 3 minus 2x. Now, when I graph the square root function, all I have to do is find the square root of whatever f of x was. And that's our y coordinate, right? If y is equal to f of x, the square root of f of x is like saying the square root of the y coordinate of our original function. So if the square root, if the y coordinate here is 0, the square root of 0 is also 0. The square root of 1 is also 1. The square root of 2 is something like 1.4 down here about. The square root of 3 is also a decimal. But I know that the square root of 4, the y coordinate here, the square root of 4 is 2. So directly below that I can draw 2. And if this is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the square root of 9, which is approximately here, would be 3. So the square root of 9 would be, where was that? Here would be 3. So I get this curve. Now watch what happens here. That comes up, curls over, and goes through those points. So any point on the original graph, any point on f of x, let's say a point with coordinates x comma y, will map to the point x comma square root of y. The x values don't change, it's just that the y value of the new function becomes the square root of whatever the y coordinate is of, of the previous function. So let's notice some things here. Now probably you noticed that these two points didn't change. So we had invariant points, invariant points at, it looked like uh, this would be about 1.5 if this was 1, 1.52. So at 1.5, 0. And at 
uh, this one here is at 1 comma 1. So invariant points at 1.5 comma 0 and at 1 comma 1. It looked like our square root function was above the original function for values of y between 0 and 1. So we could say that uh, the square root of f of x is greater than f of x for y values between 0 and 1. It looks like the square root of f of x is less than f of x over here for y values that are greater than 1. So those are things that we can see. What about domain and range? Let's do that over here. The domain of f of x is well, all real values of x, so we've got x belonging to the set of real numbers. And the range is also y belongs to the set of real numbers. But when we look at the square root function, we get that x is less than or equal to 1.5 you know, is an element of the set of real numbers. And we get the range is all the values of y such that y is greater than or equal to 0. And again, uh, is an element of the set of real numbers. Now, sometimes you may find it hard to identify exactly what the x-coordinate is of um, the x-intercept here. So let me show you how you could do that algebraically. So remember we were talking about y is equal to the square root of 3 minus 2x. Well there's a restriction on that because we know that anything under the root sign needs to be greater than or equal to 0. So the restriction is that 3 minus 2x must be greater than or equal to 0. And if we solve for x here we can say that negative 2x must be greater than or equal to negative 3. And if we divide both sides by negative 2, we get x. And remember here, when you divide by a negative number, you have to change the direction of the inequality. We got into that in grade 9. Uh, so that means x is going to be less than or equal to negative 3 over 2, or 3 over 2, or 1.5, which is exactly what we had over here for our domain. Right? That's the restriction on our function. The domain is what the restriction is. x has to be less than 1.5. I thought that was kind of cool. So now I want you to take a look at this, uh, your turn here, this new question. Same idea, we've got a linear function, 3x plus 6, a y-intercept, and a slope, where I want you to graph that and I want you to graph the square root of that line, the square root of that function. Then I want you to comment on the domain and range of both of them, of each function, and I want you to state what the invariant points are. So I want you to pause the video, do that yourself, sketch the graph, sketch the square root function, maybe start it up again, look at the picture, pause it, do the domain and range, start the video up again, and then um, let's see how things compare. So maybe you're checking in just to make sure um, that the first graph is like this. So hopefully you've got that y equals 3x plus 6 graph. You may have needed, if I needed to stretch my graph out a little bit here, my axes are different. My x is going by 1s, my y is going by 2s. But whatever you needed to do to make it work, just pay attention. Pause this again and make sure that you graph the square root function on your own. And hopefully you went ahead and graphed the square root function on your own. But here's what it would look like. 0 and 0, or the y value of 0 is invariant, y value of 1 is invariant. Between those two, the square root function lies above f of x. After 1, it stays below f of x, below 
So all I need to do here is I find convenient points like 4. I take the square root of 4 to get 2, the square root of 9 to get 3, and if you graphed high enough, the square root of 16 to get 4. You may not have got that far. Now, take a look and think about what the domain and the range are for both of those functions. So we want to calculate or we want to determine the domain and the range of the linear function, the domain and the range of the square root function, and then you want to list off any invariant points. So once again, pause the video, do that, and then come back and check it. So hopefully you have the domain and range of the first function. So because it's linear, it's you know all real values of x and all real values of y. No mystery there. Okay, but what is it for the square root function? So for the square root function, we're looking at the x values such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2, and x is an element of the set of real numbers. And then for the range, we've got y values such that y is greater than or equal to 0, and y is an element of the set of real numbers. The invariant points are at negative 2 and uh, 0. And then again, at this point here, uh, let's see, this point here, which, which is at negative 5 thirds, comma, 1. Now you may be asking why negative 5 thirds, and I had to think about that again for a second. Let's just see what happens here between this point and this point. Remember the slope is negative th is, uh, 3. That means I'm going down 1, or down 3 and back 1. So if I go down 2, that means I'm only going back 2 thirds of the way to negative 2. So this is 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds, and then of course 6 thirds, which is negative 2. Okay, so negative 5 thirds comma 1. If you turn to your textbook on page 81, you'll see this table that helps us um, sort of think about the difference between both functions between any function f of x and the square root of f of x. So it talks about if f of x, the y value, is less than 0, then the square root of that function is undefined. If f of x is 0, meaning if the y coordinate is 0, then y equals f of x, the square root of f of x and y equals f of x uh, intersect there, and it's an invariant point on the x-axis. If f of x is between 0 and 1, if the y coordinate, you know, like 0 0.5, 0 0.7, then the graph of y equals the square root of f of x is above it. And we saw that in little sketches like this, where my square root function, if I change the color here, would kind of come across. And right here, between 0 and 1, the purple line is actually above. The square root function is above f of x. When f of x is 1, right here in red, then the square root of that function intersects the graph right here. So there's another invariant point where y equals 1. And then finally, if f of x is greater than 1, like all of this portion here, then y equals the square root of f of x is below f of x. And that's why this purple line down here is below the red one. So there's these five sections, less than 0, undefined, at 0 and 1, invariant. Between 0 and 1, it's above f of x, and greater than 1, it's below f of x. So find that. Uh, you may want to copy those, that section of the table down, all of this stuff here, into your notes, uh, but process it somehow for you. Now we're going on to example 2. Example 2 here is from page 82 of your textbook. They use the graphing calculator to evaluate some of these points. I'm going to do things a little bit differently, um, but both ways work. Not all of you have a graphing calculator at home, so I thought I'd show you a slightly different way. We're still graphing, but we can do that on paper. You don't need the graphing calculator for everything.